so I want to start off by addressing a question as we move into talking about the special projects. And one of the questions that came in recently was about a state management plan, updating a state management plan and having a centralized reporting system. And would NMAPs be useful for that? And the answer is absolutely. We have states that are already doing it this way, and we'll be glad to work with you to help it work. And that is, I bring that up because that's what tomorrow is about. So today we wanted to give this overview of EdMaps, even for the new user or for the experienced user, some of the new things we're doing. And tomorrow is about how EdMaps is being used in different states, provinces at the local level to continue to grow and aid in invasive species programs. So I hope that helps. I am going to give a short presentation here. My topic was EdMaps special spinoff projects, but some of these projects, the CIPA model and ISM track are summed up very good in what you're going to see tomorrow is, is the introductions to the panel discussions. And so I decided instead of focusing on a little bit about all the projects, I really wanted to dive deeper into the Wild Spotter project because I think with the audience that we have looking at um, the registration and the attendees, We've got a broad um, group of people that are on today. And, and thank you all for being here and, and sticking with this all day. But I wanted to really challenge this group and show you what we've done with Wild Spotter. And I said earlier that Wild Spotter was like Ed Maps Light. And Joe brought that up in some of his topics and working with different audiences. We want something um, like Play Clean Go, like Don't Move Firewood. Um, like clean, drain, dry. We need something to get the public engaged. And where for professionals and for trained volunteers, EdMaps is the solution and there's tools made for those different audiences. Wild Spotter and where we want to go with Wild Spotter, in my mind, is the next part. It is how we get the public engaged, how we get the public reporting, how we get the public to care about invasive species is a major environmental issue. So I'm going to play this short two minute video real quick. Sorry, it's a video, but it really gives a good overview of Wild Spotter and why it was built. America's wild places are home to beauty, diversity, recreation, and reflection. But these natural treasures are under attack from invasive species, non-native plants, pathogens and animals that outcompete our native species and threaten the biodiversity and health of every aquatic and terrestrial ecosystem. Invasive species are a major threat to hiking, fishing, hunting, climbing, clean water, abundant wildlife, and all the benefits of being outdoors. America's wilderness areas, wild and scenic rivers, and other natural areas are vulnerable to invasion and degradation. But you, can help fight back against these harmful invaders by becoming a wild spider. To defeat these exotic invaders, we need to know where they are, and that's where you and your fellow citizen scientists can help. Download the Wild Spider app on your smartphone or other mobile device, and help us keep a lookout for invasive species when you're visiting your favorite wild places. When you spot them, follow the app to make sure we get the information we need. What, where, and how extensive is the impact? It's easy to do while enjoying the great outdoors. By uploading this information to the Wild Spotter website, you'll be helping to assemble the first ever nationwide inventory of invasive species in America's wilderness areas, wild rivers, and other natural areas. You'll also learn how to reduce and stop the spread of these insidious invaders and protect America's rivers, mountains, forests, and all wild places for future generations. So make a difference. Volunteer to join the Wild Spotter campaign today. Learn more at this website. Spread the word. Be a wild spotter and help stop the invasion. So, and hopefully that came through okay. So, Wild Spotter is not just an app. It's not just a website. 
it as a campaign to focus on educating the public as they visit our national forest initially on what the problem of invasive species are, where they should look for them and what they can do about them. And so, you know, how is it different than iNaturalist? How is it different than other things? iNaturalist is an app where you can report um, anything and it goes into a database and, and, and is made available. With Wild Spotter, we're trying to educate what the species are, what they should be on the lookout for, and what they can help do with it. And so I want that to be clear. And as I go through this and briefly give you an overview of what Wild Spotter is, remember that part. This is an integrated approach, it's more than just an app, but it's tied into what we've been talking about all day. So the tools that our, that our land managers, our states are already using in EdMaps, all of this data is going in there, but focused on that public audience. So we started Wild Spotter, launched it a couple of years ago with some pilot forests. And here's where they were. They're spread out across the, the U.S. and in the different regions of the national forest. We continued and have expanded that. We also worked with Bureau of Indian Affairs and have launched this for some of the tribes in Montana. And then we're starting to expand. And the plan had been that we were going to go national forest wide in 2020. Well, obviously in 2020, things changed and we decided to hold off on, on expanding the launch just because of COVID and, and not having some of the visitor centers and all open for the, for the National Forest. So what we've been doing in that time frame is gearing up. So as things open back up, we will be able to expand and, and the forest already will be able to expand and have this available for all of the national forest. It's allowed us to upgrade and, and do some things in the back end that when we do that launch are going to really be useful and really be helpful. So with the Wild Spotter website, we launched this new website focused, and I'm going to go through and show you a few things about it, focused on really that outfacing out, you know, people involved in outdoor recreation. We've created a Facebook group that has over 3,000 um, followers and likes. We've built partnerships with a bunch of different organizations, everywhere from outdoor recreation companies to other nonprofits to the different primary invasive species prevention campaigns. So we've tried to make sure in doing this was not recreating something, but this was working with Play Clean Go. This was working with Don't Move Firewood. This is worth working with Clean Drain Drive. You know, we see the components. I mentioned, you know, it's partly a website, it's partly the EdMaps platform, but a big part of it is the marketing and the promotion. And so we've done some initial advertising just to get the brand out there in and working with Wildlife Forever in some different types of outlets where people who are interested in being outdoor would come across it. And then really trying to focus on ways to recruit volunteers. And one of the short panelist presentations tomorrow is going to talk about some of the experience they had in doing that. And we're trying to personalize everything to the, to the National Forest. And so this is where the work comes in. This is where it takes building that relationship with the wild place, in this case, National Forest getting the species that are important to them, including those species, looking at what vectors and pathways would be the, the heaviest hit and where people should look for it. And so just to quickly kind of show you the website, trying to show different people, features the partners as part of it, linking to their websites. I mean, really explaining, you know, what this is, you know, we're trying to promote this awareness, engaging the public so we can ultimately take this data that's coming in and share it with the forest that's doing the management on that. So they will know, you know, where hopefully find new infestations, the EDRR, the EDRR that I mentioned this. And, you know, not only is it just promoting the project, but also we focused on making the website where you should look, you know, what are the places where these invasives are more than likely going to show up and you're going to see things, you know, what you should look for, 
tying in the species profiles, showing information about these wild places and about the partners and things you can do to help prevent invasive species. So, so that becomes part of what they're learning as they use this project. Continuing to build and expand the frequently asked questions and other information about it, you know, and doing more outreach like this, like what we're doing today to extend and continue to share this information. We've made it very easy to become a partner. If you're interested in Wild Spotter, please go on the website, sign up to be a partner for your organization to be a partner so we can build this network of these different organizations promoting this concept. And then ultimately we can figure out how to get the public areas that you work in added. And I'm gonna talk about that in a minute. For each of the forests, we've integrated some maps and information. And then really where you know the tool is, like we've been saying, and, and why we spent so much time focused on EdMaps and EdMaps Pro becomes in the smartphone device. It becomes that tool that they're gonna have in their hands when they're out in the field. And when they open it up, they, they learn about the app, they learn about the project with, with welcome screens, and then they choose what wild place is near them. And, and this is sorted by the closest. And like I said, we're focused on national forest right now, but it's gonna show you the national forest that's closest to you. And then, you know, we made this interface very simple. We tried to, you know, make it very clear, very user friendly, what you can do, um, very basic. And, but then some similarities to what we saw earlier with the, with the EdMaps app, you know, making where you can sign up, incorporate that species information, allow you to report, upload the pictures, just like we saw earlier, learn more about the wild place. And I'm going to talk even more about one of the cool features we've added to this. And we'll be adding to this when we roll this out larger. And then one thing that we're, the, the last part that we're doing is because we're sharing data between EdMaps and the U.S. Forest Service database, we're going to be incorporating the data sets for that forest into Wild Spotter. So when the user is out in the field, they can look and see what's already been reported around them and then do that revisit concept that we were talking about in EdMaps Pro, just very simple, is it still there? And so that's something, the next step that we're gonna be doing to this to allow users to pull that data set based on their favorite wild place and update that information. So I mentioned the marketing, we've put together a lot of materials tied along with Wild Spotter to really build the brand along with the Facebook. And here's really where we've spent some time building these promotional materials and having those available, both with some printed copies as well as, as, well as downloadable versions that you can pull and, and print yourselves. We tested out a bingo at a citizen science conference a few a couple of years ago. And it was very successful in invasive species bingo. We actually shared that with one of the national forests and they used it. But we're also trying to come up with these other kind of, you know, fact sheets and activity sheets, a comparison of the difference between wild spotter and iNaturalist. And looking at when we talk about how big an infestation is, putting it in terms that the public's going to understand. You know, is it the size of a basketball? Is it the size of a car? Is it the size of a school bus? And then, and Bell mentioned this, but, but figuring out how as we build new boot brush stations with marketing on them, how we can include the Wild Spotter branding as part of that. And also we're building some fact sheets for the forest, you know, posters that can go up and, and, and be included at, you know, his handouts as part of it. We're also adding in gamification to this. So, and to add maps as well. So we're gonna have badges that are gonna show up in the app, you know, to kind of give that reward back to the user. And finally, and this is what's gonna be really cool and really useful to the public. So when you choose your wild place, you're gonna be given the option to download the, the map of that wild place. And so you will be able to, for all the national forests, you will be able to pull that in. It will have all the roads, it will have all the trails, it'll have the campgrounds and, and major landmarks, like what you would have on a visitor's map, 
but laid on top of the Google Map interface within WildSpotter. So the app WildSpotter will become useful for users to be able to see that detail. And I've got a couple of examples um, here of what that looks like in the Android version. And so really being able to, you know, see that detail, zoom in on that detail when you're out there and use it as part of, as part of, you know, the tool that they're using when they're out in the field and just a, an add on feature for a reason for them to want to use the wild spotter app. So I want to wrap up and, and really say, and I think this will address a, a, a few of the questions as well. We're trying to figure out how we roll wild spotter out beyond just the forest service. And that's something we really um, want to work with groups to do. The Forest Service has invested a lot of resources in getting this set up um, and running. And so one of the concepts was looking at the sagebrush conservation efforts that are going on in the Western United States and how invasive grasses especially are a real big part of that. And looking at ways we can partner with the state agencies and the federal agencies to expand and maybe focus on that Western United States and is a starting point, but there's a lot that goes into adding the, your local wild places, adding state parks, adding national parks, adding that the commitment's got to be there from the organization in order for this to really work because you don't want people going out and reporting a lot of a lot of invasives on state parks or in other areas if there's not going to be some follow up to it. So we're not opening this up just where any area will be added because we want to do it and add it right. So, you know, if you work for a state provincial or federal land management agency, I would say ask the question, how can we get involved in Wild Spotter? Get in touch with us and we will figure it out because what we want to do and where we want to be. I think that over the COVID, over the last year of COVID, we've seen a lot more interest and a lot more, you know, people want to get outside, people want to do things, people want to explore the national parks and national forests and wildlife refuges and our state parks and, and these wonderful lands. And so let's come together around this wild spotter concept and, and make it the way for the public to help protect our, our wild places. And so with that, we can, and if you have questions about Wild Spotter, then Rachel, who did the, the presentation earlier, will, will be glad to, to help you out with general questions. And please contact me if you're, if you want to expand, if you're looking at ways we can expand Wild Spotter into your organization. Thank y'all very much.